Okay, I'm still uh, working through the game film, so if you have any specific questions pertaining to the game film, getting to bed at 3.30 and then up at 7-something, uh, I'm partway through the second half. So, um, But I think I remember enough of it to give you any uh, my thoughts on it. But uh, proud of our guys, of how they've battled. As I told them after the, lock, after the game in the locker room that that last six minutes has kind of been a microcosm of our season. You know, we were down nine with six to play in November and December and early January, and they refused to give in at that point in time. And, uh, and I think for them it's a good life lesson of, you know, understanding that you're going to be faced with adverse situations throughout your life and continuing to work through them, trust the people around you, stick together, and uh, don't, don't flinch in the moment and trust the process that you're going through. And, and those guys have – responded immensely to anything we've thrown at them. Uh, proud of them, obviously, and a very extremely happy locker room last night. Uh, and then I didn't get uh, – didn't tear an ACL or anything when they were throwing me around after I jumped in the middle of their huddle. So we're all good. Everybody came out of that mob scene healthy. So any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Greg, not so much about last night's game, but it's been a while since you guys have faced Notre Dame. But how would you characterize the way they play under Mike – um, since he took over that program? Well, they've uh, – so I've done a couple of radio shows already this morning, and they've asked me about Notre Dame. I haven't had a chance to really watch them intently. Uh, I saw some of the game yesterday with Stephen F. Austin as I was working out and getting ready for our game. But um, Mike has done such a great job there of understanding and figuring out what it took or what it takes at Notre Dame and, and recruiting to his culture and how he wanted to do things and how he wanted to play much like we've done it here uh, in similar – and the thing I've, I've said to a couple of the interviews I did this morning was that, you know, nobody talks about Notre Dame, you know, until you never hear much about Notre Dame in the tournament. But then the second weekend, there they are. They always pop up. And uh, I think that's a credit to Mike and his staff and how they've been able to – and I know many of those guys personally, uh, very good people and, um, you know – group that, uh, you know, team that every year it seems like it's a different name that crops up in terms of who's leading them individually. Uh, they've done a very good job of, of developing players, putting them in the right position. Sometimes it's been, you know, big, uh, bigger than average guys that have been the Troy Murphys, the, the others that names are mi uh, missing on right now. But uh, Heron Goatee, yep, the kid from Chicago, that was another one uh, who we had visit here. Uh, he turned into a heck of a player for them, and then they've used backcourt players to be their primary guys. So they've they've done a great job of adapting and adjusting and developing players through the years, and, and Mike does a tremendous job of coaching them and putting them in the right position. <coughs> Coach, I think if – People would have said you're in the Sweet 16. They would have thought Nigel had two big games. He didn't. How happy does that make you to see that other guys were able to step up and kind of the offense was able to carry off nights from him potentially? Well, I think the biggest thing is I looked at stats before yesterday's game of the last two games of Nebraska and Pittsburgh. And between Hayes, Koenig, and Showalter, one was at 15%, one was at 16 and one was at 20% shooting. And for us to be able to – usually when you're going to have – three of your older guys shoot that percentage, you're probably going to lose both games by 30-plus um, just from the standpoint of where I thought we needed to have offensive production from. But having a chance, obviously, in Nebraska, we had our chances late in that. We didn't finish things we needed to. But I think this group has grown defensively as a unit um, as much as any point in time of the year over the last week. They've really responded to what we've tried to more em or emphasize more defensively to be able to, to hold a Pittsburgh team down. Uh, and I know everybody talks about our shooting percentage. Their shooting percentage was relatively the same. And it was in large part to do to how good both defenses were and how physical both teams were. And that was my concern with both games through the weekend, that were we, able, were we going to be able to match the physicalness of the game? And I thought we were just as physical as, as Pittsburgh. It took us a little while. I didn't think we, were as, we quite matched it the first half. The second half, we responded to the uh, physicalness of the game. But I thought in the Xavier game, we were the more physical team for the m large part of that game. So that was a, that's a great sign to see that they're starting to really understand how to play together. I think defensively, we've, we've shrunk the floor much better. We've, we've taken away driving lines. Uh, we've become much more physical in the post. Um, 
so that's uh you know and to be able to hold a Xavier team 17 points below their average to do what we did to blew it in terms of holding him down uh, the same thing we did you know with young then on Friday night so um, this group understands that they can hang their hat on their defense and then eventually we can get the ball to go in you know I thought the second half we were much better offensively we moved much better we got some straight line attacks and and obviously shots started to go in a little bit especially down the stretch so that's it's good to see that they understand that we don't have to score if if the ball isn't going in we're struggling a little bit offensively there's other ways we can find a way to win Jeff very kind of dovetailing off that because Nigel has been asked ad nauseum about his inability to put the ball in the basket but did you see him do some things outside of shooting to help you guys win that game yesterday well, I thought the job he did on Blewett. I mean, the defensive job he's done in both those games. Um, you know, he wasn't he was on artist most of the time against Pittsburgh, but he got to on Young a little bit. But um, the, the job he did on Blewett, and I know he wasn't the only one. Show Walter, as I'm going through the film, was on him a couple times too. But uh, you know, I think he's he's become a much better defensive player. You know, he was not, I don't think, dedicated to defend the defensive end of the floor months ago, and uh, he understands now that. He can help us in that way. He's at his size and his ability, his mobility. I can put him on threes. I can put him on twos. I can put him on fours or fives. So um, I think he's really understood now how important he is to our defensive scheme as a whole. You've said already this year how it's kind of been an emotional roller coaster. You've felt all the emotions, everything that's happened, and now that shot, which will go down in Wisconsin lore. What were your emotions when that ball went through the basket? Um, I, I don't, hey, it's it, it, making sure it was good. I mean, that was the main thing. I thought the, the horn went off when it was in the air as I stood back in the corner and he shot it right in front of me. Um, you know, it was just kind of one of those surreal moments that, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't allow myself to get too high or too low. You know, I was ex obviously extremely happy. Um, wanted to make sure it was solidified that it was good, and then I obviously wanted to get to Chris and and say congrats because he that was a heck of a team we beat. I mean, he's had a phenomenal year, uh, and having been on the other side a few times too, you know, and I'm sure over the course of time we'll be on the other side at some point in time again down the road. Um, you know, you you understand that you appreciate the moment you're in, but understand that uh, you know there's another side of the coin too. And uh, so I want to make sure I get to Chris. And he kind of looked at me as he was looking at the monitor and said, it's good. So then I walked towards him and um, you know, said, congrats. And I have a lot of respect for what he's done there. He's done it. You know, he's had to pay his dues in his, as an assistant, too, and replaced Sean Miller when he left for Arizona. So two guys that have kind of you know, had to work their way through the ranks and, and up as an assistant and then be able to take over a program. And he's done a tremendous job of maintaining and, and building what they've done at Xavier. Jeff. Greg, obviously last year's team was so efficient offensively. I mean, I think it was a solid defensive team. This year's team, it sounds like you're really impressed by the by the work they've done defensively, not because they can't score as much, but because they're a good defensive team. Why have they been able to get it with so many new faces and also guys having to learn to play together like last year's team didn't have to deal with that as much? Well, I think, number one, we had to become a good defensive team. We, we don't have... You know, and be honest, you guys have watched us as much. Last year's team, I throw in game films of common opponents, and uh, there won't be any really in the rest of this year, maybe Carolina if we get to that point. But um, it was like a video game a lot of times. You know, offensively, like, we can't replicate what we did last year. We don't have the same pieces, the same experience. We have to manufacture offense in different ways. So defensively, we had to improve in order, order for us to have a chance to compete. Um, so I think that we've drilled more. I, I've broken down defensive drills more late in the year than ever. I mean, we're doing closeouts and we're doing shell drill and we're doing one-on-one -on -one driving lines last week before we go to play Pittsburgh. Uh, things that we probably didn't used to just do in October and November and then put them away for the year. And we, I've dug those things back out. I'll do it again this week as I look at Notre Dame and, and how they try to score um, and, and try to replicate what they do into a drill and emphasize some things. So I think it's helped us. And there's no doubt it helped us Friday night. I thought we were much better on the ball and, and we didn't get turned and opened up near as much on dribble drives. Um, we become better at recognizing where to help from, where not to help from. 
So it's been a combination, but I think the biggest thing is they figured out pretty quickly in order for us to be a good team, we were going to have to be a good defensive team first. And then the offense will come. There's going to be nights, too, that the ball's not going to go in. You know, they're going to have – Kenny's had open shots. You know, he's had more open shots than he had last night, and he's gone, you know, one for eight. You know, why does he go six for 12 from three in, in another night? So understanding that you maybe not – can't always control the offensive production. You can attempt to put yourself in the right position and take the best quality shot you can. But there's going to be some th nights that, like I said, you're not going to be able to get the ball to go in as much as you want to or think you should have it go in. And there's going to be other ways you can find a way to win. And defensively and, and then the toughness level this group has developed, uh, the mindset to play at Pittsburgh and at Xavier probably wasn't present. In, in this group in November, December, early January, we, we wouldn't have been able to line up and we would have wilted in some of the physical combat things we had in the paint uh, earlier in the year. And they've, they've uh, matured a lot in that area. Kind of piggybacking off of that a little bit, I guess. But um, in terms of the freshmen besides Ethan, I mean, a lot of them had some really key minutes last night. Kind of looking back a little bit, how impressed are you with how far they've come? Well, we've never had a group of freshmen that have played this much, at least in the 15 years I've been here. We've always had seniors in the starting lineup, seniors in the rotation. So hopefully this will help them not only for the rest of this year, but a springboard into the rest of their careers. And uh, to be honest, I haven't done a great job of using them as much as I probably should. Um, I, I have a tendency at times to lean on experience a little bit more. And um, I probably, looking back through games, wish I would have played them a little bit more at key times in other games. Um, and let them, you know, develop more of a routine. Part of it was we were trying to get everything going in the right direction late December and January, and I didn't have as much time to experiment with different combinations and let them kind of play through things as maybe I would have liked to through non, than a normal non-conference season. Uh, but how they've responded, I mean, the plays Khalil made last night, the, the uh, deflection and the dunk at the other end, a couple of the rebounds he had, Charlie's ability to play physical in the post, and. Um, Alex, obviously, and Jordan Hill, and the, the list goes on. But um, I, I've been, they've been a, a big part of why we're still playing because some nights it's been fatigue that they've had to replace or, or try to stem off fatigue from the guys that are starting. And last night, obviously, with foul trouble with different combinations out there, um, they were able to at least stem the tide and keep us within arm's reach uh, so we could buy minutes when we had either Vito or Ethan or Nigel on the bench with foul trouble. Andy, Greg, is there a big difference in, in the mindset of this team compared to a year ago or the last two years? You, a year, the last two years, you could make a case you went in expecting to get to the to the Final Four, that type of thing. Do you feel that way right now? Is there a, a difference in how this team uh, looks at, at the road ahead and, and, and its expectations? Well, I think this group has developed and grown a belief in each other, and they believe that they can win. And they've said it a few times publicly that – you know, they always believed they could do something good. They didn't get always that same feedback from the outside. And that's natural uh, that, you know, with all that we lost and this scuffling we did early in the year that there was going to be some some doubters. And um, they they didn't lose faith in that. They, they kept to the process, like I said. They've stayed the course. And I think they've grown so much. You know, I, I watch the interactions, and that's the neat thing about tournament time. You know, you have so much more time in the locker room, whether it's a – Post game, the cooling off period, um, you know the days in between the games with the media access, those type of things. You get to see the interaction with the with the players and how they respond and the little um, Nigel Burgundy thing that now I think Aaron Mace and Ferris are taking over, right? So you you see some of that stuff grow and and transcend, and that's the neat part about as a coach watching these guys off the court. I, I don't think the interactions and the the obviously it's immense joy last night in the locker room and I'm getting water dumped on me and everything like that as they're throwing me around but I don't know if this group would have had the togetherness to celebrate like that earlier in the year and that's what's grown they, they've come together and now they can enjoy a special moment together um, you know we beat VCU in New York and that was a great win but I don't know if there was the togetherness quite yet to, to uh, enjoy that and Temple and Syracuse and those type of things. Now this group has bonded so much more and they believe in each other so much that they think anything is possible. And that's 
that's really the key, I think, in, in coaching is you have to believe in them, but then you also have to have them believe in each other. And as long as they believe and you believe in them, then it really doesn't matter what happens on the outside and the periphery. And, and they've been able to, you know, withstand that, like I said, that early season scuffling and, and doubting that maybe they heard from the outside and continue to believe in each other and grow. And like I said, that's the neat part as a coach to watch that all come together. Jeff. Greg, um, Bronson, before yesterday's game, said, when asked about his shooting, said, I'm just going to keep shooting because the ball's going to go in. He saw it fall through. Nigel has said the same thing. But it, it looks like teams are just basically saying, look, <laughs> you can shoot from three-point range all you want. We're not going to go out there until you prove it to us. Does he need to get down inside more? Or if he does that, does that affect your offense negatively that he, he still has to take some shots that are open from the perimeter? Yeah, I still don't want him passing up open shots. I mean, he's he'll. I have watched him in drills enough, and and seen him do it in games over his career that he'll he'll knock down shots. I think the biggest thing with playing in the post, uh, he needs to finish better. I think there's times when he maybe expects contact and it doesn't come, or tries to play through the contact when he's just worried about about putting the ball in the basket. Um, but he's also getting he's getting double teams sent at him. You know, he did right away last night. They doubled off of different guys, whether it was a cutter or from backside. Uh, they sent a guy at him. They also sent one at Ethan. Um, so that's that's something we'll work on this week even more in terms of recognizing that and having some answers, better answers to the double teams. Um, part of it's positioning, part of it's pivoting, those, those things that we can maybe turn the tables on those double teams a little bit. Um, but... I think the biggest thing is he's got to keep playing. The nice thing is I've seen how he's tried to find ways to help the team in other areas. You know, that deflection and the steal yesterday in the first half, what he's done, as I talked about earlier with defensively, I've, I've lined him up. You know, I've, if there's a tweener forward or combo forward or somebody I need to really try to lock down, I'll give it to Nigel and say, hey, here's your challenge tonight. And uh, he's responded to that. And I think that's an area that maybe he didn't view as important um, earlier in his career, now he's starting to understand that hey, if everybody's going to struggle offensively, I'm going through my little time. There's other ways I can help this team. Greg, you shared a hug with Lamont at the end of the game. With everything you've gone through with your father and now everything he's going through, how meaningful was that moment? Yeah, that was that was special. You know, that's because I I understand completely what he's going through. Um, you know, hopefully things will take a turn for the better with his mom. Um, they're still kind of in a wait and see mode right now, uh, but he was there and he gave me great advice. You know, way back last June when the diagnosis with my dad came out and kind of knew, talking to medical people, what was going to be the finality of of everything. And you know, he said to me at that point, he said, "Hey, you know, because he had lost his dad to a heart attack when he was twenty some, and his dad was in his forties, and he said, "Hey." My dad, my dad never got to see me coach a single possession at Wooster or IUP or Akron or anywhere. Your dad has just watched you coach in two Final Fours. So it, it's not maybe the message you wanted to hear because you still wanted to find a way to save your dad or cure the cancer. Um, but it also gave me perspective a little bit more like, hey, everybody goes through some type of adversity in their life. Appreciate the good things that have happened and uh, try to make the most of, of anything negative that's going on. So that's been the main thing that I've tried to reach back to Lamont and help him with that too and to say, hey, whatever you need. He flew back this morning. He went back to Ohio. He'll come back probably late tomorrow afternoon in time for practice. So, um, you know, whatever we can do to support him. Uh, it's And it's all it's always personal. Everybody goes through that. Everybody is going to have a parent or a loved one that's going to have to go through, or you're going to watch it or experience it um, at some point in time in your life. And I think that's where it's important that you really have great people around you. And I know he's felt support from the players, from our staff, and from the people in our program, just like I felt it over the last, you know, eight months. You know, that's that's been a big part of helping me get through this. Um, and hopefully, we can continue to help Lamont too. Coach, you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, but how big a spark off the bench is Khalil, especially defensively when you guys are in foul trouble? I think he had three blocks in the first half. Yeah, he's very active. You know, I thought that the, obviously the highlight is the tip and the steal and the dunk at the other end, but the rebounds he had, he had one offensive rebound. I thought he let get away from him that ended up going the other way, but 
He uh, with the blocks he had in the second half, uh, another offensive rebound he had that drew a foul in the first half. You know, I think as he matures and, and develops even more of an offensive game, right now he's a lot of what he does is off hustle plays and just using pure athleticism. But when he improves his skill set and then also develops a mindset of how to play uh, more, I think he's still trying to figure that out of the hows and whys, and he doesn't trust his perimeter game quite as much yet. He will in time, but he also knows to play to his strengths. He doesn't try to do something he's not capable of, and he, he uses his strengths very well, whether it's you know the strength and athleticism to get on the glass, what he can do defensively. He's very good at sliding in behind defenses. Um, he has a nose for finding the ball around the rim. So that's the, the encouraging part is that I know his future is very bright in terms of what he can become, but also he's he understands right now what he is and what he can do and what he can't do, and he's really um, channeling everything to, to play within his strengths, and that's important. A freshman sometimes tries to do some things that they aren't capable of doing yet or aren't ready to do yet, and he's pretty much stayed within you know his box, so to speak, and, and helped the team a lot.